Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, September 1st, 2023, and today we have some exciting news out of the state of Arizona. A news story broke just two days ago from the Wall Street Journal, an exclusive that they acquired, that they found that Blake Masters, the failed 2022 Republican candidate for United States Senate, is planning to enter the 2024 Senate race. Now, with this article from the Wall Street Journal, there have been many like it that have started to cover Blake Masters and his failed candidacy from the last midterm elections. And the reason why this is exciting news is because it provides a bit more of insight into the Republican Party's thinking uh, and what we could expect to see come the next November election. Now, the Arizona Senate race is one that the Republican Party has been targeting for quite some time, the reason being that Senator Kirsten Sinema has been very up in the air about whether or not she will be running for re-election as an independent. And with that, we know that a Democrat certainly would also run on the same ballot, allowing the Republicans, in their minds, to sweep the Senate race. Unfortunately, the polling hasn't been too kind to the GOP when it comes down to three-way races. Regardless of the race and the circumstance that is set up, the Democrats almost always come out on top in the state of Arizona, which is a bad sign for the GOP. But it isn't to say that the races haven't been competitive. In the head-to-head -head races, there are times where Ruben Gallego, the presumptive Democratic nominee, is leading by just three, four, five points. Sure, these are large victories for a swing state, but certainly show that they're within the margin of error and possibly for a closer and competitive race come the November 2024 election. But with bad candidates on the GOP side, we know exactly what can happen, specifically what happened in the state of Arizona when Blake Masters was the 2022 Senate nominee. And that was a victory for the Democratic Party in 2022, a resounding victory against, uh, against Blake Masters. Mark Kelly, the incumbent Democrat at the time, won by five percentage points across the state that Joe Biden had won by less than half a percentage point. You're talking a 0.3% margin in 2020, all the way up to a five-point margin in 2022. The reason why that's so significant, 2022 was about eight points to the right of the nation when it came down to the national popular vote, eight points to the right of the nation. And yet the Democratic Party not only won, but expanded their lead. And the reason for that, well, yes, Mark Kelly was and is a strong senator, a strong Democrat for the state, but also because Blake Masters was uniquely unpopular, severely out fundraised, abandoned by the national GOP because they knew that he was not going to win this race. And it was one that the Republican Party started to realize a little too late when he was endorsed by Donald Trump, which allowed him to easily win the GOP primary, his victory there reassured the Democratic Party that they would have their victory in the state of Arizona. He was labeled, rightfully so, I think, based off his policies compared to the national GOP as somebody who was further to the right than many Republicans that would run for this office. You're talking about people in the governor's race, like Karen Taylor Robson, who came across as moderate, as sensible, as McCain type, co contrasted heavily with Kerry Lake. Now, in the Senate race, I wouldn't say there's an exact one-to-one -one comparison here, but I do want to say that there certainly was this idea that Blake Masters was too extreme for Arizona. It was a picture that was painted painted by the National Democrats, by the statewide Democrats, and it was certainly successful. Enough so that by September 2022, two months out from the election, Mitch McConnell's super PAC pulled out of the Senate race in Arizona. And almost in no reality did it ever make sense to pull out of one of the closest states from the last presidential cycle, the second closest state, with a significantly more Republican national environment. This was a sign we covered it when it happened in September 2022. We knew what it was telling us, that Democrats were on track for victory. And now this guy, who caused all of this turmoil and trouble for the Arizona GOP in 2022, wants another chance. He wants to go ahead and put himself back again in 2024 as a potential GOP candidate here. And the reason why I'm sure you can see already why, but the reason why this is so bad for the Republican Party is because they are already at a point where Carrie Lake, the former governor from the uh, former governor, crazy to say that former gubernatorial candidate wants to run for Senate as well. She lost in 2022 along the same ballot that Blake Masters also lost. To be fair, she did a lot better. We can see when we head over to the governor's race that Katie Hobbs only defeated Carrie Lake by just a percentage point. But what we take away from here is that not only do they want the 2022 failed GOP nominee for Senate to run, but also the failed GOP nominee for governor. Because Carrie Lake has kept a very, very open mind in this Senate race. And the problem is, for the Arizona GOP, is that they are not ready to move on. When Blake Masters made this announcement, I'm sure a lot of Democrats had a sigh of relief. The reason being, 
not only do they have an option of Blake Masters, but they will likely have an option of Carrie Lake. There is a lot of expectation that there will be rivalry between Blake Masters and Carrie Lake, two people who very much were in cahoots, running alongside each other, campaigning alongside each other, wanted to win their respective races in 2022, obviously. And now they might be facing off against one another. It's fascinating to see this war potentially happen. It's fascinating to see that the two candidates, the least likely to win, are in the best position when it comes down to Arizona. Because when you take a look at these uh, polls here, let's see if we can find any of the Republican primary polls. And I don't know if we'll be able to. So we're going to go ahead and head to uh, find a way to maneuver ourselves to taking a look. The point is that right now, Blake Masters and Carrie Lake stand to be some of the most likely people to win the Senate primary. That is a problem for the national GOP. And the reason why this is also just collapsing in entirety for the GOP is because their expectation, again, to remind you, was that they were going to sweep. That is what the story was being sold and told to the national donors, that Arizona was finally back within reach because it was close in 2018. Kirsten Sinema won by 2.4%. It was close in 2020. Mark Kelly won by 2.4%. Joe Biden won by less than half a percentage point. It was still within swingable district, uh, uh, swingable distance. But then came 2022. And when the Democratic Party won by five, the argument here was going to be that it was a fluke. We nominated the wrong guy. And guess who's back? Blake Masters. So what I take away from this, Kirsten Cinema gave Republicans a unique, wonderful opportunity, should she decide to run as an independent, to sweep the Senate race. If they had a sensible McCain-type Republican, I can guarantee you, they may not make it through a primary, but they would win the general election. Because what we know from exit polling data, what we know from down-ballot races like the Arizona Treasurer race with Kimberly Yee, is that if there is, again, a moderate, perceived, sensible Republican they can win Arizona statewide, and sometimes by astounding amounts. That's what we also have to think about, too. When you look at 2018, and you see that Kirsten Cinema Shore was able to win her race, you have to question, too. Okay, Kirsten Cinema won by 2.4, but who else was on the ballot? Kimberly Yee was on the ballot for the state treasurer race. She demolished her Democratic opponent. More notably, on the governor's race, there was a GOP candidate, Governor Doug Ducey, the incumbent at the time, who won by 14 percentage points on the same ballot. The Democrats won back the majority of House seats in the state of Arizona. They won control of a U.S. Senate seat in Arizona for the first time in decades. And yet other Republicans, the same group of people, were electing them by 14. So I think moving forward, the GOP is going to do a very similar thing to what they did in 2022. And that is make sure that they are nominating the right candidates, except correctly this time. When Mitch McConnell pulled out of his super PAC funding from Senate, many of these states, this was well after the primary had already begun. The you know NRSC did not intervene as much as they should have. The RNC, the main you know heavy hitters in the GOP, did not intervene in the races in the way that they should have. And they're starting to. I mean, we can see it in Montana with them trying to build the case for Tim Sheehy in the state rather than Matt Rosendale. They're trying to get the right people, but sometimes. It doesn't work. And in the state of Arizona, I'm doubtful that somebody like Harry Lake or Blake Masters can be avoided as the GOP nominee. These are people that just lost an election. And the problem for them, too, is that not only do they have name recognition, not only were they just recently propped up, they can make the case that 2022 was, you know, under this whole issue of abortion. And we know that also in 2022, uh, sorry, in 2020, 2024, we should expect an abortion referendum on the ballot. I mean, this case just gets worse and worse for Republicans. But they also are arguing and have argued consistently that the election was stolen, which means a significant chunk of the Arizona GOP primary voters truly believe Katie Hobbs stole the election Democrats rigged the ballots, that these are the rightful winners of the Arizona Senate race, that Donald Trump was rigged in Arizona. They did it again in 2022. I mean, this is what has been built into the mindset of the Arizona GOP. And it is so beautifully powerful for candidates like Carrie Lake because it makes voters want her more. Losing the race actually might have helped her 2024 Senate chances, only on the GOP primary side, obviously. It allows her 
to be in this position where she comes to voters and say they rigged the governor's race, but we can win by more this time so they can't rig it. I mean, it is this way of making voters believe that she is the rightful governor and therefore should be the next United States senator. It is such a fascinating uh, pathway to the Senate uh, that she might end up taking that she might end up doing, that Blake Masters might end up taking, that he might end up doing, because if there is a three-way race, there is going to be a lot of conversation about how competitive it's going to be, about whether or not Democrats can win, whether Republicans can win, whether Kirsten Cinema herself can win. And while I do think Democrats can still win in a three-way race, I think their chances drop tremendously, even with somebody like Blake Masters or Kerry Lake on the ballot. But it is clear that although these candidates were expected to win by the polls, they did a lot worse than expected. Carrie Lake was supposed to win by four. Mark Kelly was supposed to lose by less than a point. But ultimately, Kelly won by five. Hobbs won by one. There was a shift here, one in favor of the Democratic Party that rejected the extremist candidates that were on the ballot. And now both of them are back to run. I think that we have found ourselves in a, in a tipping point for the Arizona GOP, where Republicans have been targeting these six states from the Democratic Party, or sorry, eight states, Nevada, Arizona, Montana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. Eight states on the 2024 ballot that Republicans believe they have a viable shot. But what's happening across the country is more and more bad news, and Blake Masters and Carrie Lake only add to it. I've already made that video about Carrie Lake. We've discussed her as a potential nominee. She's leading in GOP primary polls, by the way. It's her and Blake Masters, one and two, but her significantly higher because she's continued this election fraud, you know, rigging uh, conversation. She got closer than Blake Masters. But the problem here is that the one and two candidates are the least likely to win the general election. And it isn't just Arizona where the GOP, again, is getting this bad news. It's all across the country. It only adds to the perfect storm that Democrats are building and fueling to maintain control of the U.S. Senate. For instance, you see that in Wisconsin, no mainstream Republican has announced their candidacy, and none of them want to. The three Republicans in the House that were exploring Senate bids have all said no. Many of the former people, including the former governor, Scott Walker, who ran for president back in 2016, was nearly elected to a third term in 2018, a very close race in a blue wave year. Wisconsin Republicans said no. In the state of Pennsylvania, they can't find anyone besides Dave McCormick. And although he might do better than Dr. Oz, he probably isn't going to win. A lot of the same arguments made against Oz are going to be made against him as well. In Montana, we see here Matt Rosendale wants to run for Senate. Why do we keep talking about him? Because he lost in 2018. In Michigan, their only candidate here, it seems as if potentially Peter Meyer, who probably won't even make it through a primary, and then James Craig, who was previously the Trump, you know, propped up candidate, who was very well respected by the Republican Party in the state, not so respected by voters, especially following his election disqualification scandal in the 2022 governor's race, where he forged signatures to get on the ballot. And obviously, the Michigan Board of Elections ruled them invalid. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Montana, now Arizona. You are seeing here that you are starting to see the collapse of the GOP strategy. They were supposed to run up the board, right? They were going to win all across the country, flip many states from blue to red. But with more and more bad news coming across these states, these specifically battleground states, it is harder and harder to see how the GOP easily wins back the Senate majority. For what should have been such an easy lift, such an easy victory for the Republican Party, it is the news coming out of states like Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Montana, that are really starting to worry Republicans. And with that, uh, you know, question one, uh, ballot referendum in Ohio, that's a warning sign for Republicans in that state that sometimes you can align yourself with the wrong side of the aisle and doing so very publicly can hurt you later down the line. In Nevada, we don't see much news, good news for the GOP. Not to say the Democrats are the favorites to maintain Senate control as of right now, but they certainly have a lot higher of a chance than they should, given the math that they're dealing with and the type of national environment that we're expecting for in 2024. So with this news, Blake Masters planning to enter the U.S. Senate race for 2024, I can guarantee you, when Democrats saw this, there was a sigh of relief. You know, this idea that they actually might maintain Senate control, even in a three-way race in the state of Arizona. It's a good thing for Democrats, a very bad thing for the mainstream GOP. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.